What's up, guys? I'm Ice Cold Snake. Today, I've decided I'm going to play through an entire playthrough of Tom Clancy's End War as the European faction on the hardcore difficulty. I played this game a lot back in the day, so much so that I was a top five player and I was the top player for the European faction on the Xbox 360. I haven't played this game in about 10 years and I haven't played the PC version ever. So I'm really excited to jump in and to relive some of those memories. I hope you'll enjoy this series because something that I found is lacking whenever I scroll through YouTube and I watch other people's videos is I see people are really talking about the story mode and they're talking about how the game really didn't have the gameplay mechanics of other RTSs that were on PC at the time. And so I wanna go through this and talk about what it was like playing this in the Xbox 360, in the theater of war with a very active community, talking about what the strategies were like and talking through sort of what it was really like to go up against some of the best players uh, on there and having to devise strategies on how to beat real human players. So with that, we're gonna just jump right into the prelude to war because I really want to relive the entire experience and go through the whole thing talking during the gameplay because I loved this game so much. It means so much to me that I want to be able to share it with you all and I want to be able to relive some of those moments myself. So with that, let's just jump right in. Now, before I jump into playing the game, I want to do a quick recap of what Tom Clancy's End War is for anybody who may be unfamiliar. Tom Clancy's End War is an RTS game released by Ubisoft way back in 2008. It was originally released on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 consoles before later being ported to the PC. The main feature for this game was the ability to issue commands to your troops with your voice. It worked pretty well as a solution for controlling an RTS with a controller. They also decided to have the camera be locked to the view of your units so you can only see what your units see and you can't see the entire battlefield. This made the combat very cinematic and it also made it work a lot better for a console based RTS but that means that it limits your tactical awareness. This is a very controversial decision that most PC or traditional RTS fans don't prefer. Units would also level up and retain experience and upgrades between missions so your battalion would level up and upgrade as you performed better and you accomplished your victories. And while there's a pretty average story, the real draw of the game was the theater of war mode. It was a persistent an online campaign mode and in this mode you'd pick one of the three factions and play only as them as each faction fought daily to push their front lines the winner for that day on that particular battle would secure the territory and be one day closer to victory you would play the same map all day long until the servers reset later that evening and it was glorious but sadly the servers were shut down in 2016 and you could no longer play that mode I haven't played this game in like 10 years and uh, I haven't played this on the PC yet. So this is going to be uh, really kind of a new experience for me, but I'm really excited to relive some of those memories. Um, I did go through just a little bit early or in the day and just did the voice trainer to see if the voice trainer worked uh, because I have heard that on the PC version, it can be a little finicky, especially if you're using an XLR microphone, it can be a little not working correctly so got that working i did play one or two missions of the prelude to war as well just to kind of get a feel for the controls so that you guys aren't having to watch me get a feel for all of the controls um, but we are going to jump right into solo campaign and we're going to go to through the prelude to war we're going to skip this trainer and we're going to do the european faction so like i talked about back in the day i was uh, one of the top players on this game for the european faction um i have a lot of memories playing this game Nuclear um, terrorism in Saudi Arabia kills i've played this game and cripples for or skip supply. this because i know this story and i think all of us should already know this story by now it's just Calling the ball world is going to shit and everybody wants to fight states. President Becerra blamed the European Federation for abandoning but the region. I played this game a lot back in the day. I remember being like really excited when the demo came out and playing the crap out of the demo and not really um, knowing much about the game. And then I eventually didn't play it at first until maybe a few months later when I bought the game. And um, I remember pretty, pretty much um, an unregistered cargo ship. Just what it was like. I mean, I just pretty much remember like my first match, my first couple of matches, and how cool it was. So. Camera on Zircon. Gunship designated Unit One. 
Gosh, it feels so weird though playing with the mouse on this. Um, Unit one clear to engage hostile one displayed on HUD. But it is nice that you can actually control the zoom with your uh, scroll wheel. I do like that. Um, I remember on the console, you had to do it in the settings menu. You had to go in and set your the height of your camera to be. Usually you had to go in there and set it to high because it always defaulted to low and you just didn't have as much tactical awareness of what you were doing. Uh. Unit one cleared to attack hostile one. Yeah, I have, a lot, I have some pretty good memories of this map too. This map is actually um, one of the best maps for the European faction um, because it's so wide open and there's very little terrain that blocks, as you can see here in the middle of the screen, there's very Excellent. little terrain that Hostile blocks uh, vehicle movement. And so it's a really good mission for you to take Designated tanks DNF and uh, it's very good for like Vercator tanks, you know, the Vercator ability. Um, is really good at getting your, it, this one's really good at getting your uh, units all the way across the map really quickly. So this is what this is one of those maps where speed absolutely um, comes into play and and helps the the European faction. So since this is pretty early on in the Preludes War and into the campaign and stuff, I mean, there's not a lot that I can really talk about um, of what goes on and how things went, but. Um, I'm kind of curious what you guys think in uh, in the comments below. Let me know if you guys want this type of playthrough where I'm just playing through the whole thing and you're seeing the entire thing, or if you want more of me kind of cutting out some of the, the stillness and me thinking and the just kind of waiting on the enemies to die. So right now, there's just a lot of me waiting. Let's take care of them. Massive detonation at the cargo ship. They've blown it up. I think there's plenty of playthroughs out there where there's just the person playing the game and they're, you know, going through all of it at the same time. And I, I don't know, I think it could be a little bit more entertaining if I just cut out some of these, like, moments of killing tanks, waiting for them to die. You know, two, where are you? Come on. Let's reposition the t gunship so they don't have to keep chasing. That's another like, uh, key thing that you always had to do when you played this. You can always make sure they, they keep attacking. Well done, Colonel. Hostile 3 still operational. Let's take care of them. Yeah, I know Hostile 3 is sitting there. I don't... I always thought it was a little strange that the prelude to war starts you off with just like full unit killing of the the enemy team, the enemy squads. Um, it makes sense because I guess they're like freedom fighters. They're, they're the, the, um, the undercover uh, terrorist group, but it sets you up to, to know to do that and then it takes it away and it makes it seem like, you know, going down is a thing. So maybe that's a little smarter on their Up part to the teach secure. you the importance of it. Because in every other RTS, you just kill the unit, they're dead. Destruction is total, so. General. It's So I did play that one already, and then I did play this hey, one's Kennedy Space Center. Or, yeah, Colonel Kennedy Taylor. Space Center. Kennedy Space Center is under attack by oh, General Generals. Scott Mitchell. All we do know is they've got serious military hardware. I'm putting you in charge of the JSF. So the the demo for Colonel this game Taylor, the way back when actually secure. used uh, this ISD map as the um, as a demo. The so you got a lot start. of. You actually like this is a great map for the demo because it's very iconic with the the spaceship there or the um gosh the word i'm looking at the shuttle there it's very iconic with the shuttle there but it's also really cool with the, the um support display shows how, how wide open it is how big it is as well it as gave a very good reserves. very gate gave a very good um backdrop for like learning what this game is going to be like 
got tanks over there, so we can move gunships there, and then the transports are over here. So we want to bring our tanks. I always love the design of the tanks on this, the M1s. Hostile forces attacking from the northeast and northwest. Gosh, American tanks are probably, unfortunately, are probably the strongest unit in this game simply because of the uh, BLOS cannons, the BLOS cannons, as I call them. Um, BLOS cannons are just absolutely disgusting in terms of balance. Um, I'll be playing on the European faction, so we won't really get to see much of that, but um, the BLOS cannons uh, basically just take a quarter of the health of a unit without having to be anywhere near them. It's like using artillery. Um, it's really just unfair how good they were. Um, so I played this prelude a lot of times back in the day. And one of the things um, you want to do when you're playing this is you just want to push all the way through to where the enemy's landing zones are because all the units are going to keep respawning there. And because they keep, as you're killing them off, they will keep, um, they'll keep the retreating back in that area. So you just want to stay on them. Just keep chasing them down. And it's important well to just done, keep sir. moving while you're going. The hostiles launched their attack from a cargo ship that ran aground about two clicks north of the space center. Whoever's behind us had resources and lots of prep time. You've inflicted heavy losses on them. Gunships are down. You've got another wave tanks bound. deploying here in a moment. Good job, Colonel. Unit one just stays there, just keeping them at bay. Tanks make our way around this way. Some okay. transports deploying, actually. Interesting. Okay, those gunships are dead, so now we use these gunships to attack. Hostile three. Schwarzkopf tanks are more than a match for IFV transports. Schwarzkopf tanks, that's right. They are outmatched. Nah, they're fine. Wish my transports hadn't, uh... Just let this gunship go by him. There we go. Let's do this. Bring our transports back this way. Do this. Unit 2 is taking out them. And now turning on to hostile 4. See, they just keep retreating. So now we just send the, the transport back behind that line of trees and it'll just keep shooting at them while they go. Now yeah, we'll just do this. Come on, Thunder. Yeah, so I have a lot of love for this game. I played this game um, right when it, not right when it came out, but a little bit after freshman year of high school for that for me. I played this all the way up through into college. Um, gosh, I mean, I've probably had 2,000 more matches in this game. Freedom Four is secure. Mitchell here. The situation is bigger than we knew, as in global. The European Federation and Russia are under attack as well. All right, getting through these missions as quickly as we can. Jump ahead. We are going to Rosenberg. Okay. Colonel Maldini, the RP Colonel Maldini. in Rosenberg, Gosh. Netherlands, has been attacked and occupied by a hostile force. I do miss. I do miss General Amadou de Banco. Okay, this one's weird. This one, it spawns you in this bottom corner, which is not the traditional Colonel spawn point Maldini for here. Usually it's back Data in this area, secure. back um, on, the harbor. Tank platoon, call sign Matterhorn. So it's a little different. It's interesting. Um, yeah, tanks the and there's gunships. Available reinforcements, as well as total reserves remaining. Let me just bring in some transports. Explosions inside the refinery compound. We have to hurry, Colonel. They're taking the place apart. I think we can uh, actually move up and hit this detonator Zoom right now. To scout the battlefield and analyze enemy movement. I don't remember exactly how much damage you need to do to a detonator for it to explode, but I think these little ones are pretty quick. Engaging 
Get a Matterhorn. Alright, so we take it. There it is. Quick way to deal with those tanks. So, like in this case, you don't want to sit there and tell your tanks to attack Hostile 4 because Hostile 4 is going to start retreating. You want to push your tanks up through the enemy so that they continue Check. shooting as they're retreating and they just keep chasing them down. That's, that's why Russian tanks, or that's why European tanks are as great as they are because they have so much speed that can continue just chasing the enemy down. They're in danger. Colonel, some fresh intel. The same hostiles have attacked Kennedy Space Center in the U.S. and Russia's prototype fusion reactors near Minsk. We need to know who these people are. It doesn't work as effectively with gunships. Colonel. They don't like to attack and move. It's a little frustrating, um, especially because, in this case, the terrain. But, gosh, using the control is a little different. Oh, Luar, you're getting wrecked. Check unit three. Suppressed by enemy fire. Yeah, ah, crap. I wasn't paying attention. Check unit three. Extraction ordered. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention to where they told them to go. I thought I told them to go a lot farther to the, to the wall here. But I think that's fine. I think I cleared them out already. Hopefully gunships don't deploy. I think gunships might deploy. So yeah, this map, this map was really, um, we saw this map a lot because this was a path for the Americans and the Russians to get into Paris. Um, and, and the attacker would always spawn on this side while the other one's in the other corner. And it made it really interesting because you'd have to position, if you wanted to attack and destroy the uplinks of the opponent. You really needed to bring your artillery basically out here into this open field and attack their uplinks, and it just made you really vulnerable. But at the same time, there's all these detonators around, so you could, if you time things out correctly, you could just blow up the detonators to prevent the enemy from counterattacking at you. Um, it made things very difficult dealing with all of these walls and this set of trees and how you would get into this side if you were coming from the other way. Um, being Europe on this map sucked. This, this map sucked. There's no way around it. The only thing that made it a little easier was the amount of detonators in some of these strategic locations so you could use your long range rocket support on your artillery in order to attack these detonators and blow them up at the right time. So. Um, hopefully we see this map again pretty soon and I can talk a little bit more about what it is we do on that one. But um, Rosenberg, man, we saw a lot of Rosenberg back in the day.